Well, this is my uh, 1 to 11. Uh, I must say it proved uh, really difficult, not just picking a team, but also picking people you've had to leave out. In goal, I've gone for Peter Shilton. Um, that was probably my easiest pick, primarily because he was, he was my boyhood hero. I ended up playing with him, uh, of course, for England, and also roomed with him uh, for a number of years. And he was still playing when I retired. He was an unbelievably brilliant goalkeeper as well. Um, in his prime, he, he was one of the reasons that Nottingham Forest, Cloughston Forest, was so successful. At right back, um, I had to think long and hard, um, but in the end I went for Viv Anderson. He was a brilliant athlete, Viv. He could go up and down that right-hand side, intelligent footballer, and a really great character. Great fun. Um, loved his kip. Loved his kip, did Viv. After every training session, he used, to, he used to say the same thing. Here we go, crispy white sheets, marshmallow pillow, and he was off and you wouldn't see him till dinner. At left back, this was a tough one. I had to decide between Kenny Sanson and Stuart Pearce, and they were both wonderful players. But in the end, Stuart Pearce won out. Um, and to be honest, it, I'd be too terrified to leave him out. I remember playing against him um, for Spurs at Forest. He hit a free kick, and I was in the wall. I always used to go in the wall, hated it. And he hit it so hard, and he hit me straight in the proverbials. And he just looked at me, and he just thought it was hilarious. And he, and he, was, and he was smiling. At this. It's one of the few times I've seen him actually smile, because even when he scored a goal, if you remember, it used to be like fearsome look. But on this occasion, he laughed. He thought that was funny. But um, um, terrific player, and um, so strong. Centre-halves, difficult one, um, played with a lot of good ones. I went with Des Walker as one. Um, Des wasn't the greatest footballer in the world, you know, he, he, he probably couldn't pass it from me to the camera, but he was unbelievably quick and a brilliant defensive mind. Brian Clough used to stick him on me when we played. He always put man-to-man, -man, which was quite unusual in those days, and he used to sing that song of, you'll never beat Des Walker, he used to drive you mad when you were playing against him. About three or four weeks before the FA Cup final in 91, we played Forest in an end of season game. It was, there wasn't anything at stake. And I came out of the pitch and, and Des wasn't marking me. They put Chettle on me. And I thought, this is a bit odd. And then I thought, Cluffy's trying this for the final. And I can swear, this is the one time in my whole career when I never tried a leg. I just, I let him get in front of me, I let him nick it off me. I didn't, it wasn't, it was a meaningless game. We came to the cup final and we're walking out of the tunnel and Des Walker came up to me and he tapped me on the shoulder, he went, it worked. So we go out on the pitch and Chettle's marking me and I ran him ragged in the first half. I, I had a perfectly good goal disallowed, I won a penalty, which I missed, or actually Crossley brilliantly saved it. We went in at half time, we were one down, even though I'd have, you know, it's one of the best 45 minutes I'd enjoyed. Did the half time team talk, came out in the second half. Um, running out of the tunnel, Des Walker comes running up the arm. He went, I'm back. <laughs> Second half, he marked me. I went out, played wide next to Stuart Pearce, and we scored. We scored and equalised. Ended up winning. My other central defender um, had to be Terry Butcher. I remember we played Yugoslavia away. We needed a draw or better, I think, uh, to qualify um, for the major tournament. We were in that. We were in the tunnel with the two teams, and Butcher was shit. He was going, Come on, cage tigers, he used to say. And you could see them going, ooh, what we got here? We went out, we were four up in about half an hour. Great defender and really good player as well. Uh, in midfield, um, on the right-hand side, uh, I've gone for Chris Waddle. Um, Chris was the most wonderfully gifted footballer. I used to love playing with Chris Waddle. He had this easy feint that would go one way and he could beat people easily. He had two wonderful feet. We used to sort of know, and there was a sixth sense between, that he used to know exactly, I used to drift away and then dart to the near post, and he used to whip these balls in. And he was primarily the reason that I signed for Tottenham uh, in 1989. Within a month of me signing, he'd gone to Marseille. <laughs> it, was like, it was like, what? It was, it, was, it was like losing 15 goals a season. But Chris was a, a wonderful footballer. And um, I never understood a word he said, but um, he's, he's now on the radio and he's got a lot clearer, thankfully, with his accent. On the left-hand side of my, my four um, has to be John Barnes, one of the most gifted footballers I've, I've had the pleasure to play with, um, and a great bloke to boot. 
He got a little bit of stick at times with England. Um, you know, club football, he was unbelievably brilliant week in, week out. But what people fail to realise for wingers is in the systems we used to play, quite easy to play against the 4-4-2 when you stick your wide players out wide. We tend to get outnumbered in midfield. So whilst in a, say in a game when he was at his prime for Liverpool, he might do seven or eight brilliant things in a game. For England, he would still do, even when he was quiet, still do two or three things. Um, either a brilliant cross, um, beautiful pass, a free kick, some sort of magic. He was, he was really gifted. Uh, a bit lumpy, Barnsley, a bit lumpy, still is. Um, but um, he was solid, let's say he was solid. Uh, two in the middle, crikey, this, this was the hardest thing for me of all. In the end, I had to go for Brian Robson. I remember playing against him when I was young for, well, not that young, but sort of early 20s for Leicester. And Gordon Milne, before the game, he said, right, he was doing the organisation for corners, and he said, he, and he pointed at me, he said, Gary, I want you to mark Brian Robson. So I went, you want me to mark Brian Robson? He said, it's OK, don't worry, in, it, we've had him watched, and in the corners, he's been hanging about just outside, outside the box, waiting for knockdown. He said, just pick him up outside. Now I went, I'm not sure he'd hang around when he sees I'm marking him. This is absolutely true. We came out and they had a corner after about 10 minutes. And um, there he was, as he said, on the edge of the box. So I wandered over and I stood next to him and he went, what are you doing? I said, I'm, I'm, I'm marking you. Um, he went, oh, really? N needless to say, he didn't stand in the box. Marched straight in, boom, header, just over the bar. And I was splattered on the floor. 15 minutes later, Again, another corner, edge of the box, there he is, stood, I'm stood next to him. He went, still here then, I went, he says, I was told you'd just hang around on the edge of the box. He went, yeah, right. So the ball came in, boom, everything, I went in the back of the net, the ball went in the back of the net, and Brian Robson wandered off celebrating. So, um, came in at half time, um, Gordon Moon said, stay up front. And so that worked. Inspirational footballer. If he hadn't have had the injuries that he did, um, I think he would have eclipsed all records for midfield players and appearances for England, and I think England might have won something. Alongside Brian, uh, I, obviously I'm, I'm limited to just one with the system I've gone for, but in the end I sort of opted uh, for Gaza, of course. I played with him for England and, of course, Tottenham. Mad as a box of frogs, um, is to this day, um, but what a player. The most naturally gifted, I would say, footballer this country has produced. Um, I wouldn't say he's the greatest footballer this country has produced because he didn't realise his potential and also he played a little bit for himself at times. You know, he beat three players unbelievably and lose it to the fourth. He was quite exasperated to play with on occasion. Played at Manchester City. They, were, they, didn't, they only had one big communal bath, they didn't have the little one. So I filled that up and just stood in it, did a few stretches, two minutes, boom, really hot water, out, felt nice and loose. As I came out of the bar, Gazza was, he says, you always do that. I said, yeah, no. I said, just loosen up. I get a bit stiff. He went, oh, I'm going to try that. I went, OK. So in he jumped. I go out, do my fifth 20 minute warm up, come back in, walk in. Gazza's in the bath like that, up to there, boiling hot water. So I've gone, don't tell me you've been in there since I, I went out. He went, it's great, mate. I went, right, so, and we go out on the pitch. And we're playing for about 10 minutes, Gaz is not getting a kick. And he comes over to me, he says, what you done, what you done? I said, what do you mean? He says, I'm all dizzy, I'm all giddy like. <laughs> so, yeah, classic Gaz and Venables. And, and then we had an argument at half time because I was getting the blame by Venables and everybody. It was a joke. Strikers, um, because I've sort of gone a bit flattish lines, I thought I need some sort of depth in my team. People say, what's the best player you've played with? I always say the person that helped me the most, and that was Peter Beardsley phenomenal player. Unbelievably unselfish. Uh, he could beat people. He used to have that little trick where he used to, do, and I never knew how he did it. I've never seen anyone else do it either. He just sort of like lift his leg a little bit and then, but he beat people every time. We just clicked straight away and the, the magical thing about it was that Peter Beers, he didn't really like going in the box much and he was all around the box and I used to love the box to be empty of people. It used to sort of stop around the edge of it and, and used to thread balls to wide people to get them in or thread little balls through to me. And I think my goal scoring record when Peter Beersley was in the side was pretty much a goal a game and I owe that, that to him. One left, um, well I have to go for a striker. Now at the end of my England career I played a couple of games with a certain Alan Shearer. His debut for England 
uh, we played together. We both scored against France in a, in a friendly at Wembley. Great international goal scoring record, wonderful um, Premier League record, still miles clear of anybody else in the goal scoring stakes. So I went for Alan Shearer. I'm happy with my team. I think, um, you know, tactically I'd like to have done something cleverer with, um, uh, but in the end I just, I just went for the tactics of my time. For more great clips from the Fantasy Football Club, subscribe to the Sky Sports YouTube channel by clicking here.